Okay, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about composite shapes and finding the area and perimeter. So what is a composite shape uh, or a composite figure? Um, what it is is a shape or figure made up of more than one simple shape. So uh, by putting together a square, a rectangle, a triangle. So a real simple um, composite shape might be, you know, when you're a little kid and you draw a house. What do you draw? A triangle on top, you know, maybe a square on the bottom. Boom, there's a composite shape, right? So, you know, you can stick a half circle on there. There you go. I don't know why your house has ears, but there you go, right? These are composite shapes. When you're sticking together, cutting out shapes. So I've drawn a composite shape here, and I did a really bad job of trying to draw a semicircle in it. What we want to do is find the area and perimeter of this shape. So to do that, you have to find the area and perimeter of the set certain parts or separate pieces of that shape, and then either add or subtract them together. Now, you definitely need some formulas first. Now, in grade nine, we don't expect you to memorize all the formulas. What we usually do is we give you a formula sheet that you can use on your tests and your quizzes and the exam. So this is the formula sheet that we generally use. Now, here's the deal. I never use some of these formulas. You should never need to know, you know, what is a special formula for the perimeter of a rectangle at this point, right? What is it? Length plus length plus width plus width. Yeah, no kidding. You add them all together, right? I'm never going to ask you to find the perimeter of a regular rectangle, right? Or a parallelogram. It's just add the four sides together, right? Or a triangle. Just add the one, two, three sides together, right? So I'm not saying to cross these out. I'm just saying, you know, these are so simple. Perimeter, you're just adding up the outsides, right? What about a circle? Okay, that one you need a special formula for, right? Circumference is the, we use C for circumference of a circle. That's the distance around the outside of it, right? C. Um, and it's either pi times the diameter, diameter is the length all the way across, or two times pi times the radius, because remember your diameter equals two times your radius. So it's really the same formula, okay? And then we got our area formulas over here, right? Area of a rectangle, length times width, area of a parallelogram, base times height, area of a triangle, base times height divided by two, or one half base times height. They mean the same thing. I always just use the first one, so I'm going to scratch out the ones I don't use. That's what I use. Area of a trapezoid, A plus B times H. Well, what's A and B? Look, A is the length across the top, B is the length across the bottom, right? So you add them together, then you times it by the height, H, and then you divide it by two. So same thing. I always just use the first one. The second one's the same thing. They just wrote it differently. And then the area of a circle, pi times the radius squared, right? All right, so let's use these. Now I've doodled all over this page and wrecked it. You don't have to cross things off on yours. I'm just kind of zeroing on, on what are the important formulas. All right, you got to know length times width for a rectangle, base times height for a parallelogram, base times height divided by two, right? Um, just kind of highlighting the, the key ones because the other things are so easy. You should be able to find the perimeter of a rectangle without ever being given a formula, right? All right, so there we go. Those are the ones we really need off the front of this page. Okay, so let's get back to this. Let's start with the perimeter of the shape. So I'm going to move this up so I got a little more room here. Um, okay, move it up, move it up. There we go. Okay, so now perimeter. Remember I said I'm not going to use the formula for a perimeter of a rectangle? We could say there's a rectangle here, right? Look at here's a rectangle, right? But are we finding all four sides of it? No. We only need this side here and this side here, right? We don't need to know. Um, we don't need to know what uh you know the we don't need to add the six to it this is not our perimeter perimeter is only around the outside right all right so let's start with our triangle though so i got a little triangle here right now i left a measurement off here by accident sorry i'm just going to add that in right now this was supposed to say that from here to here is three centimeters my bad there we go okay so we're going to start with that triangle and let's find we don't need the perimeter of it, right? I'm telling you this from here to here is three centimeters. So let's kind of highlight what we know to start. We know this is three, so we're good on that. What we need to find next is this length right here, right? Well, we can use Pythagorean theorem, right? So let's just make a, I'm going to make a perimeter section down here. Perimeter. There we go. All right. So let's start with this triangle here, right? We're going to use Pythagorean theorem. Remember I said anytime there's a right angle triangle, you're probably going to have to use it. So this is the C side. This side is 3. This side is 6. Remember C squared equals A squared plus B squared. All right. So here we go. We're going to go C squared equals 3 squared plus 6 squared, right? So what are we going to do? You're going to square the 3, which gives you 9, right? Uh, you're going to square the 6, which gives you 36. You're going to add them together and take the square root. So what's the square root of 45, right? All right, so let me just go get my calculator here. All right, I'm going to put in 45. I'm going to find the square root of it. So I have to hit second on my calculator. There you go. And I got about 6.708, so we're going to say it's about 6.7. All right, so we got that, right? Centimeters. So from here to here, 6.7 centimeters okay so now what do we know we know that this is 10 we already covered that that's 10 
This here is also 10 because it's the same length as up there. So I'm going to label this here as 10 also. What we're missing now is we need the perimeter of the semicircle, the half circle right here, right? What is the perimeter of that? All right, so what is our, let's go to our formula sheet here. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. And circle. Perimeter of a circle is called the circumference. So pi times the diameter or 2 times pi times the radius. So I'm just going to go with circumference equals pi times the diameter. Let's go back to this. All right, so circumference equals pi times the diameter. But what do we want to do? This is half a circle, right? So we need to modify this formula. So I'm going to write divided by 2. We want to cut it in half, right? Because we're not finding the perimeter of an entire circle, just half a circle. Well, don't forget the diameter of that circle, if we drew the whole thing in, would be 6 centimeters, right? It's the same as the height over here. All right, so it's just pi times 6, but divided by 2. Now, if you want, you can go 6 divided by 2 right away and make it 3. And then at the same time, just go pi times 3. Now, when you're doing this, use the pi button on your calculator. Don't type in just 3.14, because a lot of these questions need to be a little more accurate. So you have a pi button somewhere on your calculator. you got to look for it. You, sometimes it's hidden above another button where you have to hit second or shift. So pi. And I'm going to times it by 3 because that's what 6 divided by 2 is. And there you go, 9.4 we'll say approximately. All right. So that would be this part right here, right? This is the 9.4 from here to here. All right, so let's just get our total now, right? Total, add them all up, and that's going to be it. So we got the 10 at the top, the 10 at the bottom, right? 10 plus 10 plus the 6.7 over here plus the 9.8. So let's add them all up and you get 36.1, 36.1 centimeters. So that would be our perimeter. Great. We got it. Cool. All right. So let me just clean this uh, shape up and we'll start by, we'll, you know, finish here by finding the area now. Okay. So I've kind of cleaned it back, put it back into its uh, starting uh, size here or whatever. All right, so let's do the area next. Now, for the area, we need to find the entire area of the shape. So like with perimeter, I didn't need to use all the formulas, right? All I really needed was uh, the half circle. But with the area, let's start with the area of, I'll call this part one, the triangle, right? I'll call it area one. That's going to be our triangle, OK? All right, so area one, triangle. Well, what is the formula for the area of a triangle? Go back to your formula sheet if you forget, right? Here's a triangle right here. There's the formula, base times height divided by 2. So what is the length across the base? How tall is it? Divide that by 2. All right, so base times height divided by 2. Well, my base is 3. My height is 6. So 3 times 6, which is going to be 18, divided by 2. That was pretty easy. 9 centimeters squared, right? Because it's a square area, area uh, is what area is, right? Two-dimensional measurement. Notice with our perimeter, it's one-dimensional. We didn't put squared. It's like to the power of 1. So this is to the power of 2 because it's a two-dimensional measurement. All right, let's do the area of the rectangle here. Now, a lot of you will say, but we're missing a piece of the rectangle. We'll deal with that next, right? If I just look at this rectangle here, right, one, two, three, four sides, that's pretty easy, right? Uh, I'll call it area 2 of the rectangle, OK? All right, so what do I got to do? Area of a rectangle, I don't even need to go to my page, right? Length times width, that's easy. So we got 10 times 6, or 6 times 10. It really doesn't matter who you make the length and width. That gives us 60 centimeters squared. Finally, we get to the half circle again, right? Now we need the area of half a circle, right? So not a full circle. So let's double check again on our formula sheet. Let's jump over to that. Here's my circle, and look in the area column, right? Right here, area, go down the bottom. Pi times the radius squared. All right, so let's go back. So I'll call this area 3, this part here which is a half circle. OK, so area equals pi times the radius squared. And then we have to divide that by 2 because we only want half a circle. So what's our radius, right? Well, remember, this is 6 from here to here. So if this is 6, right, the radius would be half of that, right? It would be 3. All right, so we're going to go pi times 3 squared, not 3 times 2, 3 squared divided by 2. So let me get out my calculator here. All right. So we're going to go, well, 3 squared. Well, I don't really need a calculator for that. 3 times 3, right? 3 squared is 9. Times that by pi. Hit your pi button. Equals. Divide it by 2. And we got 14.13. So we'll say it's about 14.1. Approximately 14.1 centimeters squared. All right. So we found all three of our things, the triangle, the rectangle, the circle. But we got to get our total. Now, we got to be careful here, right? We want to take the triangle, right? Add it to the rectangle but we want to subtract the half circle, right? So in other words, we want to go, what's 9 
plus 60 minus 14.1, right? All right, so let's grab our calculator one final time. 9 plus 60, right? Pretty easy. And then we want to subtract the 14.1, boom, 54.9 approximately. So I put the little dot above my equal sign to say it's approximate. 54.9 centimeters squared would be my total area. And again, in this case, we subtract it. So the moral here is sometimes you have to add shapes, sometimes you have to subtract shapes. Now again, with this lesson, I could do, like in class, we do this for a few days. There are so many kinds of questions we could do. There are just tons and I can't, I know, I don't wanna load you up with homework. So I'm just gonna do a couple more kind of key ones that people have had trouble with in the past, okay? All right, so this question here has been on uh, previous tests and people have had a real hard time with it. What is the area of this shape? Now, if you look at it carefully, there's just two triangles. There's a little triangle here. So let's start by finding the area of that little triangle. Now people will say, but that's not the area of what we want, right? But that's the area we're gonna cut out. Just like the question before with the uh, circle, right? The half circle, we cut it out. So let's find the area of, I'll just call it the little triangle. Little triangle here, okay? Now, area of a triangle we saw from our formula sheet is base times height divided by two. Well, what's the base? 14, what's the height? Eight, it's right over there, right? So it's 14 times eight divided by two. All right, so grab our calculator and we get 56 centimeters squared. All right, so that's the little triangle. What about the big one, the entire triangle, right? That's talking about from here to here to here, right? The whole triangle, the big, big, big one. All right, so the area of the big triangle. Same formula, base times height divided by two. The base is still 14. But what's the height? Well, the height is add the eight and the 12. So 14 times 20 divided by two, right? And what are we gonna get? That's gonna give us 140 centimeters squared. Okay, so now to do this question, we just need to subtract the two, right? Because if I take the big one and take away the little one there, I'll be left with the area of this V kind of shape that they want us to find the area, of, right? So just subtract them, that's all it boils down to. So to finish it off, our area is equal to 140 minus 56 and what do we is exactly 84 centimeters squared and that would be the area of that so the point i'm trying to get across with these is you're going to have to look for shapes within the shape what shapes can you see right think back to grade school when you do questions like this what shapes do you see in the picture and then do i have to add those shapes do i have to subtract those shapes in this case we had to subtract that uh the smaller triangle right there's that smaller triangle right here we had to cut this piece out. So if we can find the two triangles, subtract them, there we go. All right, a couple more real quick. All right, this is another favorite question of mine. Um, Ashley runs around the following track, so like a track at school, right? How many times must she run around the track in order to run a total different distance of four kilometers? Okay, so to figure out how many times she has to run around the track, we have to find the distance around the track. Now the key here is the distance around the track. The problem people have with this when they start doing it on a test because this is, was a classic test question is they start finding the area no no she's running around the track right you know let's say she starts here she goes around around this is a perimeter question so the first thing you really got to do I guess when you do these questions are is it a perimeter area question am I covering something am I painting something that's an area question am I building a fence around something or running around something that's a perimeter question so this is perimeter now we already have this is a hundred which means this is 100 here, right? What we need is the perimeter of this piece and this piece. Well, what do these two things make when you stick them together? They make a circle, right? So really, we just need to find the perimeter of that circle. So it's a circle with a diameter of 60 meters, right? Oh, I'm writing centimeters, it's 60 meters. Oops, there we go. Okay, so if you stick these two halves together, that's what you get. So let's go to our formula sheet again. And we need one of these two formulas, right? The circumference of a circle. So I'm just gonna use pi times the diameter there. All right, so, oops, back to, there we go. All right, so circumference of the circle is pi times the diameter. Well, the diameter is 60. So let's get our calculator and go, what's pi times six? All right, so 60 times, hit your pi button, okay? And I get 188.4955. I'm gonna just keep a bunch of those decimals for now. So I'm just gonna 188.49. Anytime you see me go dot, 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 generally means I have more numbers in my calculator that I'm not sharing, right? I got those there right now. Okay, 
So that would be the distance around the circle. Now, to get our perimeter of our track, right? So I'm just going to write track perimeter here, or let's say the track. Ah, we'll just leave it like that. We're going to take that 188.49. What are we going to add to it? 100 and another 100, right? Or 200 altogether, right? So because that this piece here and this piece here. All right, so that means altogether it's 388.49 approximately uh, meters. All right, so that's the distance around the outside. Okay, so we did the hard part. Now we just got to figure out how many times she's got to run around. She wants to run four kilometers. Well, it's reminding us here a kilometer is a thousand. So if I times that by a thousand, that means it would be 4,000 meters. All right, so to figure this out, we want to say how many times does 388.49 go into 4,000. So I'm going to get out my calculator and do that here. So let's, uh, I'm going to add, let's just go, all right, what's 4,000 divided by 388.49? That'll be accurate enough, I guess. All right, 10.29. So approximately 10.3 laps. So a little more than 10 laps, right? So we're going to say 10.3 laps. So like 10 and a third, right, is what she's going to have to do. She's going to run 10 full times and one third more of that track. That's how many laps she'd have to do to run four kilometers. Cool. All right. So one more example I want to show you. That's just again the kind of questions that seem to people people tend to have the most trouble with when they start out. Okay. One more. Okay. Final question of the day here. The semicircle in the diagram has a radius of four centimeters. What is the area of the shaded region? So. The shaded part, or at least if you pretend the circle's not there, is clearly a trapezoid, right? So what we want to do is we're looking for the area. So let's find the area of a trapezoid, okay? Is it trapezoid? I can't spell. There we go. All right, so let's go to our formula sheet here. And boy, I've really messed it up, right? There is my trapezoid formula right there, right? A plus B. A is the length across the top. B is the length across the bottom. i got to add them together. Times it by the height. Divide it by 2. All right, so here we go. So area equals A plus B times the height divided by 2. All right. Well, I know the B is 14 across the bottom, right? So we can put that in there. But I don't know what A is, right? And I don't know what the, the height is, right? Like I'm missing some information here. So we got some problems, right? Don't know the height. Don't know that. Now, think about a clock, right? Think about the if you have an arm of a clock. Whether it points up, points there, points there, points wherever, it's always the same length, right? It's the same thing with the radius of this circle, okay? The radius of the circle is four centimeters. They told us right here, right? So from here to here is four centimeters. That means from here to the top is also four centimeters, right? This is four centimeters. All right, so that would be the height of our circle, right? Which is also the height of our trapezoid. So that would go here. Now, what about the length across the top? Well, we know it's four plus four, so this is eight, right? So we actually have that measurement also. All right, so we had everything we needed, right? Uh, what do we got to do here? Eight plus 14, we're going to have to times by four, divide by two, and that's going to give us uh, 44 centimeters, I think. Yep, 44 centimeters squared because it's a two dimensional measurement. Okay, so that's the trapezoid. Let's do the circle now. Now, again, it's half a circle, not a full circle, right? So the area of a half circle, or you can call it a semicircle if you don't want to use the word half, you know, same idea, right? Half circle, semicircle means the same thing. Formula sheet we saw before is pi times the radius squared, but we have to divide it by 2 because we want half a circle. So remember, we're not always dividing by 2, just when we're dealing with half circles, right? And if I had a quarter of a circle, I'd divide it by 4. All right, so pi times the radius, when we know the radius is 4, we need to square that and times it by 2. Now remember, 4 squared is not 8, it's 4 times 4, it's 16. So let me grab my calculator here. All right, so the number one mistake that gets made here is people don't square. They just times it by 2. It's 4 squared, right, which is 16. Times that by pi. Boom. Divide that by 2. You could obviously do a little reducing with your fraction there. And we get 25.13 approximately. 25.13 centimeters squared. So don't forget to divide it by 2. And to finish it off, we just need to subtract, right? Take the trapezoid. Subtract the 25.13 approximately. So let's bring this guy back. So I basically have that there. I'm just going to go minus 44 and do it the other way. And it's going to be 18.9 approximately, we'll say, right? So when I subtract them, I get approximately 18.9 centimeters squared. That is the area of the shaded part, right? So that's enough for this. I could go on all day and do more and more and more of them. But you hopefully are getting the point. First of all, is a perimeter area, that's the first one, right? Step one, ask yourself, am I finding the perimeter 
or the area, right? Step two, what shapes do I see, right? Find the you know area or perimeter of those shapes. And then last part, do you have to add them? Do you have to subtract them? What do you have to do? And be careful when you have to modify a formula, like divide it by two because of a half circle or something like that. It's generally half circles are the ones you got to watch out for. All right, that's enough for this lesson. Thanks.